Hey Bikes and Blades fans, I'm back with another video. I'm not sure what category to put this in because it's not bikes and it's not knives. It's just a kind of a household craft project that I want to show you. I have this candlestick. I guess you'd call it a candlestick. Maybe it's a candle candelabra or a candle reflector, candle lamp, I don't know. But the, uh, the way this thing works is you put a candle in here and you light it and then you've got this magnifying glass in the front and this parabolic reflector in the back here that kind of reflects the light from the candle into the room and it's just a really pretty piece. We've had this for a long time, probably almost 20 years now. It's not old, it's not an antique or anything, it's just a uh, uh, kind of a reproduction type thing. But the problem with it is that we're not really candle people, so what I mean by that is that it's very uncommon for us to light a candle uh, just because, you know, we don't tend to have them around. And I'm always worried too that if I put a candle on this thing, light it, forget about it, go someplace, like leave the house or whatever, that it could burn down. Uh, you know, the candle could burn down and then you could have problems. And I've had friends who've actually, you know, lit their house on fire with candles. So um, this thing has been sitting unused for a long time. And what I want to do is turn this from a candlestick into a lamp. And so I've been thinking about this a little bit and I've gone ahead and bought some parts that I think will help me do this. Um, first thing is I've got this really cool LED bulb. It's kind of a Edison style bulb. So I think this will look kind of nice in here. You can see it's got that spiral filament. So that'll be the bulb for it. I've also got a cool vintage lamp cord. And what this is, uh, it's a cloth wrapped cord that looks kind of, uh, looks kind of vintage. So I think this will look good with this, this style of uh, candlestick. And then to get everything put together from the hardware store or Home Depot, I've got a package of these 1 8 27 uh, nipples, they're, they're lamp parts. And these are just different lengths of 1 8 27 straight pipe thread uh, connector pieces that are hollow through the middle so you can run a wire through them. And to get help get those installed I actually also have this tap which I haven't even opened yet. And what this is, is a 1 8 27 straight pipe thread tap. And I'm going to use this to actually tap the, uh, the base of the lamp to accept those 1 8 27 pipe nipples. And then finally well, not finally. I also have a grommet to have the wire come out the back of the lamp. This may be too small. I might have to go to a different size. And finally, I have from Amazon a package of sockets for the light bulb. And this, uh, I'll put a link in the description, but basically what this is, is uh, this set comes with four different lamp sockets. They're all standard base lamp sockets, but they come in different colors. So you get one of each, which I think is really cool. So this is this is perfect for me because I can uh, pick and choose whichever color looks best with this with this light fixture. I think maybe like kind of like uh, maybe this this color here or this color, this, this dark pewter. Uh, these two more copper or brass colors are not what I want to go with. But one of these two guys I think is going to be the right choice. So I've thought about this a little bit and I think I have a plan how I'm going to take this apart and modify it to get a light bulb socket in there and run the wires out the back. So let's get started and I'll show you how I go about doing this. Okay, so the first step obviously is to take the candlestick apart and that's really pretty simple. First thing I'm going to do is undo this little thumb screw and take out the big magnifying glass on the front. Set that aside carefully. <laughs> and then uh, this whole reflector on the back is held on by this wax catcher candlestick holder part. Um, so it just uh, it unscrews counterclockwise. So I'm going to stabilize the reflector and hold the base and unscrew this part here. And the reflector is a little top heavy so I have to be careful. Take that off and you can see there's a little spike here that holds the candle. And there's the reflector. So those two pieces come off. And then, I'll show you the detail here. The candlestick has a threaded insert. It's like a cast iron piece 
that's held with a single screw and that has the threads that the candle holder screws into. So I'm going to remove that little countersunk screw and take out that threaded piece. So I just need a flat blade screwdriver and just loosen that piece. And it's going to fall to the bottom of the lamp when it's undone, so I'll just put my hand down there to catch it. There we go. So there's that cast iron piece that has the threads for the candle holder part and the little uh, countersunk screw that holds it in place. So the way these two pieces go together is that this part is inside the base and then this reflector or candlestick holder part threads in there. When I look at those threads, it is, as far as I can tell, a 3 8 16 thread. So if I look at my number 16 thread here, right there, it meshes up. It's a little hard to see on camera, but now I have these 1 8 27 pipe nipples that, that do have a hollow through the center that I can run a wire through. And the nice thing is, is that 1 8 27 straight pipe thread, the minor diameter of this is actually larger than the major diameter of a 3 8 16 hole. So again, this may be hard to see on camera, but you can see that it's larger and won't, won't go in there. And what that means is that I have room to re-thread this to 1 8 27. But I'm going to drill that with the right size drill bit and then re-tap it using the tap that I got on Amazon for this, this 1 8 27 straight tap. And that will allow me to thread these pipe nibbles into this piece here. And then the other challenge is I have to saw the 3 8 16 thread off this base and then drill a hole through there for this 1 8 27 uh, pipe nibble to go through. Okay, everybody watching this who is thinking that this pan of ice is not the right tool for this, yeah, you're right, but it's what I have handy, so I'm just going to use it. And this is kind of the point of no return here, too, because uh, once I saw through this guy, it's kind of done as a candlestick, so here goes nothing. I don't know what metal this is. I th think it is... It kind of, from the filings that are coming off, it looks like maybe it's aluminum. So, this could be a piece of polished aluminum. Don't think it's brass. It's definitely getting thin. There we go. Yeah, I think it's aluminum. Which is surprising, I thought it would be brass. But it is pretty light. So now I just have to drill through the center of this piece here to take out this little candle holder spike. Okay, so again, it's going to be hard to see on camera, but there is actually a separate kind of brass insert in the middle of this uh, reflector that forms that uh, little pin that, can't, that the candle gets stuck on. And what I want to do is kind of mark the actual center of the reflector and then center punch that and drill out the hole. So I'm just going to make some marks here and find the true center of this reflector so I don't... Because the pin that holds the candle doesn't look like it's centered up. Center punch this guy. That's not what I wanted to have happen. But there it is. I guess it was threaded. That's interesting. So in the future, if you've got one of these and you want to take it apart, maybe grab that little center piece with the pliers and you might be able to unscrew it. Okay, so I'm not a genius, uh, but I'm not a complete idiot. So after having a catch on the drill that first time, I've got it clamped now with a couple of pieces of leather here so that it doesn't... Uh, doesn't take off on me because I like my fingers. And I'm just going to go through progressively larger drills until this is uh, the right size.
All right, so this next step is the one that makes me a little bit nervous. And what I have to do is drill a hole, or drill out the hole in the center of this cast iron piece a little bit bigger so that I can tap it with this 1 8 27 straight pipe thread tap. And that's going to accept the, uh, the pipe, the lamp pipe that's going to carry the wires to the socket. And so I did some research and the drill size that I need for a 1 8 27 tap is a size 348 drill. Um, I don't have that. But what I do have is a, a drill that is 11 30 seconds and when I measure it it comes out to 341 which is a little under but I'd rather go under than over. So I'm going to clamp this up on the drill press and drill it out and then hopefully I'll be able to tap this thing. And like I say it makes me a little nervous because I only have one of these pieces. I can make a replacement but I'd rather not. So here goes nothing. Okay so for tapping what I like to do is undo the belt on my drill press. There may be a better way to do this, but I, I unplugged it, undo the belt on the drill press, and then get the piece that I want to tap in here. Line it up nice and straight. Clamp it down. And now what I'm going to do is put some cutting oil on here. this down in contact. Whoops. Get that tightened up first. Now at this point the, the drill press just spins free. So I bring it down into contact and then I start to turn the pulley by hand up here while applying a little bit of pressure on the, the press. And I just let it walk itself in. Back it up every now and then to clear chips. It's a big tap and my hole is a little undersized so it's definitely taking some effort. I think I'm getting through the bottom side of it. it's getting easier. Definitely certain to feel like I've come out the back side. Yeah, that's a good feeling when it starts to spin free because you've cut all the way through. And at this point it's basically running on its own threads. And just back it out of here. Kind of superimposed set the threads. And that's the challenge with going from like a 3 8 to a 1 8 27 is that um, <clears throat> not taking off a lot of material. But the trick will be if this if this pipe threads through here, then we know we're good. And it does. I love it. Look at that. <laughs> Ta-da! So the hard part's done. From now on out, it's just uh, assembly and wiring. So something interesting that I found with the lamp sockets that I bought is that the threads in the back of these are close to 1 27 but not quite right. So the hardware that I bought from the hardware store will start to thread but it stops. and doesn't thread all the way through. The hardware that came with the sockets does thread through but these don't match my tap nor do they match the hardware store hardware which does match the tap. So there's something slightly off. I don't know if it's something I don't know about lamp pipe threads or whatever but the threads in here are not quite right, so I have to hand tap these guys to match up with the hardware that I'm going to use. The, the stuff that came with the sockets is a little too short. And this is in a brass socket, so it's pretty soft material and it's actually pretty easy to tap by hand, so I'm just going to use my tap wrench and manually tap these. I just want to go backwards until I feel the threads line up. And then start tapping that guy. It goes nice and easy. And I'm going to tap both these, the kind of antique 
bronze and this uh, dark nickel, whatever you want to call it, finish. And tap both those out. Okay, and I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup on these to get all the uh, cutting oil and metal filings off of them, but now they will take the hardware that came from the hardware store that's the right length. It goes through there nicely. Not enough light. You can't see, but it is threading in there very nicely. All right, to finish this project up, I need to make a place for the cord to come out of the back of the lamp. So I'm going to make mark a spot kind of midway down the curve. I don't want it too low, but I don't want it too high either because I want it to kind of exit at a natural point. So uh, I'm going to pick a spot on the base where there's enough room inside for the cord to route, but not so high that it's coming out at a funny place and not so low that it gets pinched uh, inside the base because it does taper uh, as it flares out at the bottom. So I'm going to mark that spot and I want to line it up with the, the hole that attaches the cast iron piece so that when everything's assembled, it'll be in a line, the screws will be hidden. So I'm just going to mark this spot and then I'm going to center punch it and drill it out. When I get done, I need to have a 3 8 inch hole to fit my 3 8 inch outside diameter, 1 quarter inch inside diameter grommet. I'm going to finish this hole out with a step drill because twist drills are going to make kind of a triangular shaped hole if I keep going. Looks pretty good, just got to do a little bit of cleanup. That looks really good. Okay, so you can see I've got my hole drilled in the base there, in the right spot. And I have a grommet that I'm going to put in that hole to let the uh, electric cord pass through. And again, this is a 3 8 outside diameter, 1 quarter inside diameter. And it's big enough to let the cord through, but not so big that uh, there's slop or extra room. So. There, that looks nice to me. Finishes off that hole and keeps it from chafing the wires. And then I just gotta proceed to the actual uh, wiring. All right, so I've got all the parts that I need to finish assembling the lamp pretty much right here in front of me. I've got some uh, lamp cord that isn't the fancy rayon covered lamp cord because when I put this together, the way this, this assembles, Everything has to be threaded together and twisted, and it's a little different from a conventional lamp in that regard. Other lamps, you can push the socket down in when you're done, um, and you just pop it down into a socket holder, but on this lamp, everything has to thread together, and that means there's going to be some twisting if I don't figure out a way to have the wires turn independently. So what I'm going to do is cut a length of this plain uh, plastic lamp wire, which isn't as pretty, but that's going to be attached to the socket and then that can turn with the socket while I'm assembling everything. And then I'm going to use these wire nuts to connect that plain wire to my fancy uh, cloth covered vintage style cord. About that length, maybe a little extra. And when you're wiring up these kind of sockets, the neutral wire typically has little ribs on it. And so that's uh, what I'm looking for now is, that, is those ribs. Okay, so I put everything in uh, fast forward here to get through these steps because it took me a while to do it. Uh, basically, stripped the end of the wires and then put them into the uh, 
holes in the socket and then tighten the set screws. Make sure you pay attention to your polarity. Um, I think it would have been easier if I had taken the bracket off the back of the socket first, but I didn't, so it took me a little longer. Then I installed the lamp pipe with a little bit of blue Loctite and the nut that holds it. And that made that kind of a nice permanent assembly that was nice and stable to work with. And then uh, reinstalled the cast iron piece into the base of the lamp. And then you can see I've got these couplings here. And those give me a little bit of space between the reflector and the bottom of the socket to put the bulb kind of in the middle of the reflector and the magnifying glass. So then the next step is basically line everything up, drop the wires through, thread the socket in, tighten it up. And then uh, I've got to connect the vintage cord to the, uh, the plastic lamp cord inside the light. So basically just twist the ends together, put the wire nuts on there. And then I install the magnifying glass, the bulb, and try it out. Uh, look at that. So that's full intensity. It's not a super bright bulb, which is what I want. But that looks pretty good to me. You can kind of get a sense of the, uh, the directional effect of the reflector and the magnifying glass. Because off axis, it's not nearly as bright. But then on axis, it definitely works like a little spotlight. So I'm going to put a, a zip tie on this wire at the back inside as a strain relief. But uh, that's basically it. I'll get some beauty shots of this next. I also picked up this plug-in dimmer, which just goes in line with the cord and turns the lamp into a three-way touch dimmer. And I don't know how long this will last. I've seen some reviews that say that they die fairly quickly, but uh, for now, plug it in, and then I touch it once, it turns on low, touch it again, it turns on medium, touch it again, it turns on high. Okay, so now I want to take this lamp inside and see how it looks actually in the house. I set it up on a little side table, and this is looking at it from a distance. You can see that you can look at the filament, and it's not uncomfortable or too bright. And it's really cool because it takes it from just being a bulb in a socket to being something that's really decorative and interesting to look at. And on a higher setting, it puts out a good amount of light and actually gives a nice warm glow to the room. And it's much more practical than the candlestick because... Now we can turn it on and off at will, leave it running and not worry about it. And it's, I think, kind of a good conversation piece and has sort of a neat steampunk look to it. And I'm really happy with how it came out. All right, so I hope you enjoyed watching me turn this candlestick into a lamp. I know it's not my typical material. It's not bicycles and it's not knives. But the truth is I have a lot of interests and a lot of hobbies. And this is the sort of thing that I enjoy watching on other people's channels. I like seeing them get creative and build things and make things. And so I'm hoping that uh, you, my viewers, will enjoy this too. So if you did like this video, please click the thumbs up. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. I'm trying to get my subscribers up. So anything you can do there would be great. And I will catch you in the next one. Until then, good riding.